What is something that is expensive, but only owned by poor people? I remember I had an old Chevy truck that cost so much to maintain and keep fuel in that I couldn't afford to save for another car. I literally kept me broke until I eventually joined the military and could afford a different vehicle. Crappy cars are more expensive than you realize. Payday loans. They should be illegal. They hurt people more than they help them. That's some people's only option though. If they have shredded and the lights are getting turned off, that may be their only option. Once those are illegal, loan sharks come back and you just get beat or killed if you can't pay it back. Interest rates are stupid high because it's high risk to lend to these people who don't have money in the first place and they would go out of business if they charged reasonable rates. As somebody who works at a gas station, Newport cigarettes, seriously, it's almost only ever poor people who buy them. And they're one of the most expensive cigarette brands we carry. As a former gas station cashier, I noticed a few trends. The poor folk who buy new ports are usually the poor trying to flex on other pores. The more humble pores go for things like Paul Malls and First Class. Whatever menthol is cheapest. Also, there is a very distinct racial divide. With almost all new port buyers being POC or living with POC. The white pores always flex with Marlboros. Single items of things that should be bought in bulk, like single rolls of toilet paper. Barely scraping by paycheck to paycheck means buying bulk is sometimes impossible. Samuel Vimes got it right. Take boots, for example. He earned $38 a month plus allowances. A really good pair of leather boots cost $50, but an affordable pair of boots, which were sort of okay for a season or two and then leaked like hell when the cardboard gave out, cost about $10. Those were the kind of boots Vimes always bought, and wore until the soles were so thin that he could tell where he was in Ankhmore pork on a foggy night by the feel of the cobbles. But the thing was that good boots lasted for years and years. A man who could afford $50 had a pair of boots that'd still be keeping his feet dry in 10 years time. While the poor man who could only afford cheap boots would have spent $100 on boots in the same time and would still have wet feet. In poorer sections of a city, convenience stores and liquor stores sell single cigarettes. Prepay electricity meters. I though it was a movie thing, there really are people somewhere putting dollar coins into a meter to get light. I don't know about the US, but they exist in the UK. They aren't coin in the slot anymore. You put money on a card. But the worst thing about them is that they are often in rented accommodation for poorer people. And they charge a higher rate per unit of electricity than a normal meter. So the poorest people are charged more for the same thing. Well at my job there are a few people who I'm aware of their salary. They make around $25k a year after taxes. One of them somehow has a lifted Ford Raptor that I hear is like $50k. He recently acquired a motorcycle too. He probably thinks it's cool but he's likely eating the dirt off his tires because he can't afford anything else but those payments and insurance. A perpetually broken car. I was leaving an abusive relationship that also ruined my credit. So my parents bought me a car so that I could survive once I got out. They overpaid and spent $3000 on a 2002 Toyota Corolla with over 200,000 miles on it. It was nice gesture, but I'm now stuck paying them back every month. And I have spent over $1,500 in repairs on this car in the last year and it's still not running like it should. There's no way I could find another sucker to buy this piece of junk so I'm stuck with it until I can pay it off or until I fix my credit. What a mess. Best advice I can give is to learn the car and how to work on it. Saves an absolute ton of money and the threshold for getting into it is a lot lower than most people think. Dental problems. Those impacted wisdom teeth are hella expensive. Being poor is very expensive. I make enough to pay my rent but I work so much I don't have time for a dental appointment. Even with a stimulus check and priorities in place and a paycheck I could lose my house if my landlord isn't understanding. I need a job. I applied for McDonald's because it's easy and I'm broke and need the money. They need me to buy shoes and pants before I start. I have money left over from my paycheck but that doesn't mean I can afford anything more than laundry detergent. It must be nice having fabric freshener in those beads that make clothes smell nice. I have to buy two in one because who can afford two bottles? I had to decide between car insurance or groceries. I haven't made a payment on my credit card in two years even with a stimulus check. I've been driving an unregistered car for six months. I wish I could invest, 
but my son started school and he needed clothes and supplies. Bad credit. It is expensive to make someone comfortable enough to loan you money without them being certain you'll pay it back. A lot of companies like cell phone service providers will make you put down a large deposit before they'll sign a contract. Pretty much anything with the contract is more expensive if your credit is bad. I wasn't taught money skills growing up and was stupid as a teenager so my credit has been a struggle to rebuild. Lack of preventative care. Cheap shoes or cheap mattress leads to more expensive medical care. Lack of dental maintenance leads to expensive surgeries. That kind of thing. When you can't afford preventative medical care, it catches up to you, leading to more expensive costs later. Fine mattresses. I'm a paramedic, was badly injured at work last summer, and my life has been a waking nightmare, literally, because I couldn't sleep, because replacing my bed was impossible. Not only are they unreasonably expensive, but we ended up going through three different beds before we finally found one that didn't make my back pain worse. We finally found what may have been the magic bullet a week ago and I could cry. I'm so grateful. Rent to own. Spoiler. You never quite own it. Places like errands just make me mad. It seems like you're getting a good deal. But you aren't. You're paying like twice as much for an item. I was going through a divorce in another state. And knew I was going to get my furniture at the end of the process. So I rented a cheap couch for like $10 for 2-3 months to put in my apartment until I got all my stuff. They tried to bully me into buying into all kinds of extra needed insurances. They were very forceful and condescending. Then one day, I honestly forgot to pay on the date payment was due. It was $10. And I easily had the money. So I was shocked at the level of anger and pushiness from the phone call reminding me payment was due. It made me feel very bad for the people who have to go through these situations and treatment in order to have furniture. Not to mention that the couch was complete junk. Lottery tickets. Well, 99.969% of lottery tickets. So you're telling me there's a chance. Multiple cars that don't work. The amount of privates in the army who have just enough money to pay for their 30% interest 2018 Ford Mustangs but not enough money to buy literally anything else is pretty ridiculous. This, the first thing they teach in basic needs to be financial management. So there I was, yesterday, brand new private comes up to me and says he wants a new car. I'm like sweet what are you looking at? This guy looks at me and says he wants a Hellcat. I about had a stroke. Usually quickly preparable food items. They're usually more expensive than if I stuffed a bell pepper with rice and a small amount of minced meat and shoved it with the oven with tomato sauce for example. Simple recipes with low ingredient counts are normally very cheap and delicious. They do however take time to make. Time some people might not have because they have to work in order to finance the time they spend sleeping. Also not having usable kitchens, which financially stable people don't even think of as a thing. Shopping carts. My ex was a manager at a supermarket in a low income area, and he and an employee or two would drive around every couple of weeks to collect stranded shopping carts. He told me stories of finding carts used as all kinds of sh including dog cages and a grill. Someone turned a shopping cart over on top of a fire pit and grilled meat on it. Innovation. He didn't get that cart back. Cheap equipment of all sorts. Like dollar store items that really shouldn't be available in the dollar store. This is the boots theory of socio-economic unfairness. The summary is based on boots, as you might expect from the name. Where the laborer only makes enough to pay for cheap boots, let's say $50-ish. Meanwhile the foreman, or person in charge, can afford expensive boots, let's say $100-ish. The catch is that the $50 boots only last one season, where the $100 boots last many seasons. The poor laborer can never afford the expensive boots but over any length of time beyond a single season, ends up paying more for boots than anyone that can afford a better, higher quality pair, because they are buying boots every season. I always see everything in a dollar store by this metric. Sure it's cheap and if you only ever intend to use it once or a few times, then that's fine. Anything you need to use more than once, go somewhere else. A good modern example would be pots and pans, bakeware and similar. At a dollar store, even if you get a reusable baking tin, 
it's likely going to fail or us or otherwise become unusable long before something that's 10x the cost at Walmart, even the Walmart tin will likely last hundreds of times longer than the dollar store tin. If you're poor, the best thing you can do for these types of items is to buy them from thrift shops, anywhere they sell used goods. Buying a nice, but used item will last longer and cost less in the long run than something you buy at the dollar store, but dollar stores are immensely successful. Because people are penny wise but pound foolish. A lot of kids. The poor are often very fruitful. Poor people not only have a lot of kids, but they also tend to have them much younger than their wealthier counterparts. A lot of people like to assume it's because poor people are too dumb to understand birth control. So I'd like to offer a hypothetical perspective on this. Imagine you're a 17 year old girl, growing up in poverty. You are not the best student. So even if you could get financial aid for college, you're afraid you wouldn't do very well anyway. Plus, you need that time to work and make money, and school so far has only gotten in the way of that. After, if, you graduate high school, you'll probably work the same minimum wage job you've been working, only now you'll get more hours. What do you have to look forward to? What's within your grasp that would make you something meaningful? Well. Being a mom is pretty important and special. Everyone celebrates a new baby. Plus, like any 17 year old, you're eager to show you're an adult now. And what could be more adult than being a parent? So yeah, you know about condoms. You and your boyfriend use them sometimes, but not always. You know that the clinic will give you birth control, but you gained weight and felt sick when you tried it, so you don't bother with it again. Plus it's a whole bus trip and a bunch of waiting. And you have better things to do you are not planning to get pregnant but when you end up that way it's not some sort of death sentence abortion is expensive and scary to say nothing of whether it's even accessible to you or whether you or your family has a moral objection to it so that's not really an option and after the first couple weeks of anxiety you start to get excited about how this could be a good thing people are nicer to you than they've been in years checking up on you Asking about the pregnancy and the baby, you're something now, you're a mom. Bad teeth. When you can't afford a dentist visit and let your oral health slide, it can have all sorts of expensive health consequences, such as heart disease. Crippling medical debt. My medical debt got sent to debt collectors. For the last two years I've been ignoring them any time they call or send letters. How much trouble could I get in if I continue to ignore them? Excessive amount of anything, like Jordans, like $200-$300 shoes, did an eviction once and the guy had about 100 boxes of them, that guy was selling knockoffs. The Toyota on the street that speeds down the road sounding like a WW2 artillery strike. Loads of stuff, it's expensive being poor for a variety of reasons, including having to buy poorer quality goods and needing to replace them more often because of initial cost not being able to bulk buy, predatory loans, and really anything that puts someone in a you have no other choice position. On top of that there are things like cheap food being bad for your health and incurring expensive health bills later in life. Continuing paying rent on something you'll never own. Cheap cars that require maintenance more often. Being poor is expensive af.